Welcome to Mars or Bust. I'm Spaceman Dave. And welcome to Episode 5, A Trip to Mars, The Hazards and Necessities. If you like this video, please hit like and subscribe. It lets myself and YouTube know you're enjoying these videos. In this episode, we're going to go through some of the things that are needed to fly from Earth to Mars, from takeoff to touchdown. There'll be several things that'll be needed to fly from Earth to Mars, but we're going to focus on the items that are needed to keep you alive on the trip there. These items will include air, food, water, gravity, space hazards, and beer. No beer. What? Don't allow beer in space. No beer? Oh man. Okay, sorry. I tried. First, we're going to need air, or more accurately, oxygen. Natural dry air by volume contains approximately 78% nitrogen, 21% oxygen, 1% argon, and trace amounts of other gases mixed together. For a trip to Mars, they'll have to use multiple systems to produce enough air for the trip there and once they arrive. This will be accomplished bringing portable air from Earth, using air scrubbers to clean the CO2 from the air in the ship, and also an oxygen generation system that uses electrolysis to split hydrogen and oxygen from water. Next, it's something we all like, food. Unfortunately, in space, you can't eat like you do here on Earth. It tends to get a little messy. As a result, you end up eating mostly prepackaged foods. Even though it doesn't look quite as good, it's good for you. And when you're on your way to another planet, your health is very important. That doesn't mean you can't have some good food. Like here on the ISS, they had a pizza and beer party. There was no beer. Just leave the beer out of it. Hmm, okay. Next thing we're gonna need is water. Or actually, potable water. Water that's safe to drink. That means all water. Yes, including urine goes through a process that eliminates all impurities and all that's left is pure water. The system on the International Space Station produces approximately 3.6 gallons per day. Next up is gravity. Gravity is something that cannot be produced in outer space. It can be simulated but cannot be produced as of yet. In the long term something will have to be figured out for this. Currently, there are only a couple of different kinds of simulated gravity. The first is, is a thing called centrifugal force. This is produced by spinning an item fast enough to produce enough force to push you toward the outside of the circle. There's also acceleration and deceleration simulated gravity. This is what pushes you back into your seat when you accelerate quick in a car or when you push on the brakes and you're pushed forward toward the steering wheel. This can also be done when flying through space. This is when you continue to accelerate at a 1G constant. When you're halfway to your destination, you turn the ship around and decelerate at a 1G constant. which results in 1G of simulated gravity toward the floor of the ship. Unfortunately, we can't carry enough fuel to accelerate then decelerate at that rate and still get to Mars. As a result, neither of these are feasible at this point. So we're left with having to live weightless until we reach Mars, then once we land, having to get used to Mars gravity all over again. And Mars gravity is only 38% that of Earth. So in comparison, if something weighs 100 pounds on Earth, it only weighs 38 pounds on Mars. And last but not least, 
space hazards. NASA says there's five hazards of human spaceflight. Radiation, isolation, distance from Earth, gravity, or their lack of, and hostile closed environments. We'll start with radiation. First is cosmic radiation. Cosmic radiation is made up of high energy particles emitted by a supernova. These particles can cause cancer by damaging the DNA when they come in contact with a human. The easiest way to protect against this is by shielding, either lead or water shielding. This lead is impractical on a spaceship. Water would probably be the best bet. By having a two layer hull in which you could circulate water between the two sections. And we already went over the fact we're gonna need water on the ship for other purposes. Next is solar radiation. Solar radiation is produced when it's ejected from the sun. In most cases you have a heads up and you know that this is coming. With this being the case, you could have a shielded room in which the crew could go into until the solar storm was over. Next is ultraviolet radiation, also known as non-ionizing radiation. We get some of this on Earth. This type of radiation is pretty simple to guard against, and it also comes from the sun. They can have UV protection in the glass and the windows, and they have sun shields on their helmets when they're outside the ship on an EVA. The next up is isolation. SpaceX's plan for this issue is to have enough people on the crew so you don't get tired of dealing with the same two or three people. Also, I'm sure that they'll have internet access between both Mars and Earth so they can keep in contact with their families. And watch your favorite YouTube channels. Hint, hint. Next, it's the distance from Earth that can be an issue. Not only can you not turn around and go home if you get tired of your trip, but you're going to have to deal with a lot of things on your own. Medical issues, ship maintenance issues, and delays in communication. All these can cause problems, and in some cases can even mean life or death. Gravity we've already gone over, but we do know it causes medical problems when in weightlessness over a long period of time. And last, hostile closed environments. And I don't mean because you might encounter aliens on the ship. This will include immune system issues and increased exposure to germs because of the closeness of the environment. This can be guarded against by a healthy immune system. Also staying healthy with the right amount of exercise, the right foods, and the right amount of sleep. So with the right stuff, as they call it, in more ways than one, I think this is all doable. Give me your thoughts in the comments below.